Hey, what's going on? It's Bill Burr, and it's time for the uh, Thursday afternoon, just before Friday, Monday morning podcast, and I'm just checking in on you. Oh, that was a good one. <laughs> the lovely Nia here. Nia, give me, give me a microphone here. I got to pass this through because the, uh. the wires are all crossed here. Oh, I got the wires crossed. The wires are crossed. We're sitting here. Is that better? Yep, me and the lovely Nia. We have on the reason Nia is here is I we have a huge announcement to make. Mm-hmm. That as of this morning, yeah, Nia and I, uh-huh. Nia yeah. and I, yes, became two people, right? That yes, had corned beef hash for breakfast. Absolutely, and we are so <laughs> proud and we're so happy. And we just want to thank everybody for your support, for your support over and the for last your... few months. <laughs> And for your thoughts during this difficult time, <laughs> baby isn't here yet. So I've been uh, I've not be- yet. I've become uh, I've become like a sitcom dad, just fucking hanging out at the house wearing yep. my big fucking socks. Bill's got big fuzzy socks on. Yeah, they're it's warm. his new thing. That's right. You because it's your- cold in here because I get hot. Yeah. <laughs> And we have hardwood floors. <laughs> and Nia's fucking walking around more pregnant than anybody I've ever goddamn seen. So it's like she can be standing in Antarctica being like, can we put on the AC? And I'm over here fucking chilly willy. So I, I, am. I got I'm on my... uh so pregnant. I'm just like a, a human tea kettle. I am short and stout. You're all baby, though. You're all baby. You look good to me. Um, Thank you. Anyways... Uh, so we're sitting out here on a rainy fucking Sunday. It's been raining cats and dogs out here. And uh, did you say rainy Sunday? Did I say Sunday? I don't know. It feels it like sounds- a Sunday. It's a fucking Thursday. Whatever. It's pouring outside. You know what pissed me off? What yesterday on the news? Some fucking idiot. Like they announced out here in California, they said the drought is over. Just because it rains? <laughs> well, now because it rains so much that there's flooding, but like yeah. this shit's going to stop and then this, this is going to have to last us for like four years because you know the next few, like... Well, how much does it have to rain for it to no longer be a drought? That's my question. Well, I, I does think... Does just the mere fact that it's raining mean that there's... No, no. no the drought. water levels in all the reservoirs, I believe, I'm just would guess that this, they have to get to a certain level because when I did my bus tour burning my own hole in the fucking California ozone. Sure. When uh, we went by all these big reservoirs that were for, uh, you know, drinking water or just even people just riding boats around or whatever, mm-hmm. like you could see the water line. I mean, it was like two, like, you know, a brownstone in New York. Picture like two or three of those stacked on top of each other that low and, and it looked like it was a half mile across. I mean, it was fucking ridiculous. Yeah. It was, it was terrifying, to be honest with you. So... Evidently, it's gotten up to an acceptable level, so now everyone's going to start taking fucking long showers, you know what I mean? Just, mm-hmm. You know what kills me out here? Every time when it starts to fucking rain and you, wash all the, you watch all that water going down the L.A. River, that goes all the way down to Marina Del Rey, I believe, and then it just goes out into the ocean. It's like, why don't you capture that somehow and mm-hmm. save it? All that runoff. Yeah, I mean, I think environmentalists would like that to happen. Well, that's a very, that it's would, a very complicated you know, process. You know how much that, that would cost? <laughs> Kids couldn't have books in schools anymore <laughs> if we captured if we did, the rainwater. Yeah, if we did that, then we'd have to cut this, and I don't know. It sounds like, it seems like it's complicated. Maybe it's not. I don't know. Yeah, you have, you have no energy today. I can, can you hear it, it in my voice? Yeah, you have like rainy day energy. I have rainy day and pregnant as fuck energy. Rainy day and pregnant always <laughs> brings me down. Well, why don't you just fucking have the kid? Just fucking, you know. Oh, I wish I could. I wish I could have it right now. Yeah. You know what? You know right what's now, funny is, is I've been like joking about this on stage is the level that people have been trying to. Uh, every day I get a text. It'll say, did the kid come yet? And I'll say no. Me too. And then the follow up text is. Are you nervous? <laughs> it's like, well, I wasn't. I was sitting here relaxed. Like, they just get you on edge. And I'm just like, uh, it's been this great process where I'm just like, wow, man, I always listen to people. I need to stop doing that because it doesn't help you. They just, they, I was joking on stage, like, they were getting you like, you know, when you get a dog all excited, like, you want to go outside? Huh? You want to go outside? Do you want to go outside? <laughs> like, that's what they're doing to you. Like, is the baby here? Are you nervous? Are you excited? I know. I've been getting... You're freaking out? Like three or four texts a day for like the past three days. It's like, no, baby's not here. 
Yeah, you sound like you drank some of that. What's that? What's that drank? <laughs> you sound like you're lean. Is that what the kids are doing nowadays with their fucking cough syrup and their Irish spring? <laughs> that they take a cheese grater and they fucking <laughs> Irish spring. That's one of my favorite things. To Dirty s- Sprite. That's what Future calls it. I like when you got all these these fucking people on the internet and they show you how to make it. Because I was you know I was a comedian. I got to know what's going on. Oh, did you look online to see how it's made? Yeah, it's literally Sprite and like codeine, like prescription. No, and then cough they syrup then they and- take like a cu- someone put a, a, a jar. Jolly, Jolly Rancher, Rancher. or yeah. some shit in there, but like if you just look at the ingredients on the back of the fucking thing, yeah, yeah, like uh, I gotta hand it to this generation, all these generations. Every time you think like, you know, wow, like, like I always say in my generation there was crack babies, and I'm just like, okay, that's it, that's the end, that's as fucked up as you as you're gonna see like human beings do things like. Like, as a parent, I wouldn't be able to be shocked. Like, you're doing what? Right? Mm-hmm. Then came meth heads, mm-hmm. which literally look like walking dead people. They're not zombies, but they're not real people anymore. They have, mm-hmm. like, fucking... They, like, when I would do gigs out in the Midwest, you know, out Iowa and, and further west, into those states, you know, celebrities go to buy a log cabin and buy a fucking... <laughs> Pretend they own a grizzly bear outfit, right? You go out there and they had like those before and after pictures of people on meth. Yeah. Yeah, and I was just like, holy shit, that that made that blew my fucking mind. And now looking at these guys, I mean, I guess this isn't as bad as meth, but just Human watching. beings will always find a way to get high though. New creative ways to get high. Like that's just kind of how it goes, don't you think? But I'm gonna like, sound like an old man here. What what was wrong with what the fuck we did? Can't just drink a couple of beers? <laughs> I mean, what the, that that fucking drink that they're drinking—that's like shit homeless people do, or like like full-on alcoholics, and people will not fucking give you like money for booze anymore, and you just don't have it. That that's what they used to do. They go and they start drinking pre- Nyquil. Yeah, because prescription any of that stuff is really like, I don't know. I've never drank that kind of stuff before, but it's supposed to mimic the feel of op- opioids. I thought opioids, o- opioids, <laughs> opiates. You mean? Oh no, opioid is, is the correct. Right? I think that's some bump on your ass. No, that's a hemorrhoid. <laughs> I thought opiates. I thought that's opiates. Opiates, but and opioids hemorrhoids is also a word. It is, I think. Is that when you take like the Q-tip, lace with the shit, and you put it in your ass? I don't know why rave? you are obsessed with the ass, <laughs> but no. <laughs> no, there was a thing that these kids were doing. They were soaking something. What? There was, I swear to God, I swear to God, I went down a rabbit hole how these kids get high. There was this fucking thing they were doing. They were taking some, like a Q-tip or something, and they were soaking it in this shit that got you high. And then they'd stick it in their ass because there's a thin membrane sure, there. I believe it. Yeah, like how people blow coke up each other's ass and stuff. No. Yeah, that's a thing. That is not a thing. It is. I, I, now, you know what? I'll go with the it fucking Q-tip thing. up the ass. No, it totally is a thing. Hang on a sec. That is not a fucking thing. It is. <laughs> The old coke in the ass. <laughs> just, just, yeah, just picture what that looks like. What do you, you cup it in your hand and then you, you go spread it wider, wider and yeah. No fucking way. You probably use like a straw to funnel it in the anus. Really? And how well do you know this person? <laughs> hey, dude, we've been friends for a while, right? You know. <laughs> I've seen you drink drinks. You use a straw. I use a straw, right? That's not really crazy, you know? And we both have asses. So I got this bag of Coke. Hear me out. Just hear me out. Just sit out. Sit out. Just listen to me. I'm not taking my pants off. I was just adjusting my belt. Listen. All right. Coke. This is going to be on my fucking search engine now. Next time I go to the Apple store. Coke up. Yes. Up the bum. Up the, up the bum. anus. Up the arse. Yes. Up the arse. So it's even in England. I got cocaine blown up my ass, so you don't have to... What? Oh, that's a Vice article. Of course it is. Okay, wait. Anal use. Rectal administration. Mm-hmm, I told you. This is you. drugsforum.com, so... <laughs> don't put cocaine in your butt, people. That's at Reddit. <laughs> uh, Liveleak.com. Man blows cocaine up a woman's ass. Yeah. Was it's he trying like to big, numb it before like he stuck his fatty in there? thing. Yeah, so okay. Wait a wait a second. Well, you don't Encyclopedia have to Dramatica. Investigate it more. Just know that it's a thing that exists. All right. Well, then I got to look mine up. Well, I got to read the article here. All right. This is what you need: some sort of fucking uh, <laughs> kitchen knife. Don't a spoon. wait. 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 Let's not tell people how to do it. 
Okay. I mean, I guess when the, I okay, this isn't real, Neil. When the internet was suddenly abuzz with rumors that getting a friend to blow coke up your ass with a straw was worth the trouble, I had to see if I'd been doing it all wrong. <laughs> After all, blow doesn't come with instructions. Oh, Jesus Christ. Get to the fucking point. All right? I don't, there's not going to be a video of this, is there? Okay, okay. Uh, I know it's funny, I said, hoping the conversation would cover, but I just wanted to understand the possible health effects on a more fundamental level. Okay, so he called somebody, physician's viewpoint, and a very nice woman named Kate spoke to me. I asked her about it, and she fell silent. He said, I know it's funny. I said, I was hoping... She says, it's more sad, actually. He said, oh, yeah, that's the word I should have used, sad. Overall, Kate was extremely helpful and promised to contact all the gastro... uh, something or all, just... Still, the internet had spoken. I had to try it. Da, 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 da. This guy, okay, he's, I'm going to go with the pictures. Now he's got the spoon. He sticks it in a vial. <laughs> All right. In the end, my high was no more significant than when I opt for the more orthodox approach. All right, so people are doing it. Because there was the other thing, the thing I was talking about. Rave. Let me look this up. Rave. Drugs. Ass. Search. <laughs> Somebody got their booty eaten at an, at an American festival. Strange oh, happenings regarding EDM festivals, raves and drugs. <laughs> Strange happenings regarding EDM festival, raves and drugs, them, dot, 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 them, and going to eat their ass. Not really, and not what people are thinking. How to smuggle in gear to a concert. Jesus Christ, shaking her ass at a rave party. Wicked woman. I don't know. I, you know All right, what? can okay. we move off of this topic? This is getting weird. Maybe it's getting weird. We're not doing it. We're just researching it. We're like Pete Townsend. <laughs> hey, the San Diego Chargers are moving up to Los Angeles. Oh, was, I saw something online about that. Yeah. They finally, they're returning home where they belong. They were the Los Angeles Chargers for one season, the first year of the AFL. They're back where they started. Here they come round again. Hey, where did Nia go? It's almost like she's having a contraction. <laughs> um, <laughs> dude, you got to ask yourself as a San Diego Charger fan, after all the fucking heartache and everything you just went through, and now they're going to fucking walk out on you. You know, you got to be asking yourself, like, what, 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 what was that all? F- what was that all for? You know, right? I actually, I'm back. As much as they hated, <laughs> as much as they hated the fucking the Patriots and Tom Brady and I had a horrible fan experience when I went down there and I wore Patriots hats not realizing how much, realizing how much they hated us um, I just don't I, I just I actually felt bad for them as fans because it wasn't that they lost it's the way they lost they did the old Boston Red Sox thing what we used to do before we started winning all the championships was uh, we couldn't just have the decency to just suck like the Cubs all those years you know the Cubs just sucked they had like two errors two, two error games one in the early 80s, and then they had the fucking one where they blamed that, that fucking uh, little nerd, you know, rather than the other six people that stood up around him also trying to catch the ball. They had two, two heartbreakers. That was it. Other than that, it was a big keg party. Everybody standing there with their shirts off. They all live in Wrigleyville. They got money. They, they, they're not sympathetic people. You know what I mean? Um, but Charger fans, you know what I mean? They just like, uh, they had that fucking old ass goddamn stadium. They rode it out. They were down there. They came close in like 95, got their fucking asses kicked. Was it 95 or 94 when Steve Young got the monkey taken off his back? Wasn't that what it was, Nia? Uh, Yeah. Steve Young, who claimed the Patriots should have all of their championships taken away because of Spygate. One of the dumbest things I ever heard. It's like, yeah, that's great, Steve. It's a brand new rule. It was illegal for one game. So when it wasn't illegal because we were doing it back then, then they should get charged for it. When the rest of the league was also doing it. All right, whatever. So welcome to L.A. We went from no football teams to two, Nia. Now, how does that make you feel? Are you excited? Mm, no. Yes? <laughs> no. no. You can say no. I don't care. I'm kind of... Um, you know what, Nia? Tap out. Indifferent. You done? No, I'm okay. You okay? You don't look like you're it. okay. You don't look like you're okay. I can make it. <laughs> <laughs> It's a good distraction. <sighs> all right. For, just, for all the guys out there or for the ladies who've never been pregnant, what does that feel like? At this point, Ooh. if you guys are wondering why I'm so fucking relaxed, she's had so many of these goddamn things. It's like somebody crying wolf. Yeah. 
Yeah. Crying wolf. Yeah. No, these are called- You know what you should do to freak me out, yeah? When I'm what? not there, just throw a glass of water on the floor and just be like, oh my God, Bill! And just Some, watch me someone, load up the car. Someone has suggested that I do that to you on Twitter, but I don't- Oh, I'm not original. I don't think that's a good idea. Um, yeah, no, these are called Braxton Hicks contractions. They are getting you ready for actual real contractions. And I've been having them more and more frequently. Just answer the question. As I'm getting closer. Answer what question? Like, what does it feel like? Oh, it feels like an extreme tightening in your abdomen. No, related to a pain you've had before. Getting slugged in the shoulder. That's just never happened to me. Having your big brother grab you by one of your ankles and drag you back down the stairs. That's never happened to me. (laughs) Um, and this is the only way I can relate to it. It's punched like you, in the ear. It's like you. It's like someone is in your stomach, stretching it out as tight as it can go, and then it slowly goes back to normal. Running into the living room because you missed a big play. Looking at the TV and running full speed into the coffee table. Stomach first, sure. A stomach first. Okay, there we go. I did that. Yes, I did that on Monday when I watched Alabama. The dream. When I watched uh, the Alabama Clemson game, now I know Nia, as much as you don't like football, I know you heard me screaming when Clemson scored that last. You were definitely screaming. <laughs> <laughs> I would be the worst announcer ever. You know, like the great announcers have to be like, "Do you believe in miracles?" Yes, or like, "He did it! He did it! Flutie did it!" They have like something, you know, the shot heard around the world. Whatever the fuck it was, the Giants win the pennant. The Gi- I just went like, "Yeah, you were going crazy there." Yeah. I they sounded call like one of Alabama the Crimson Tide. Tide. Call me Deacon Blues. Deacon Blues. Um, <laughs> I actually, when I was watching that fucking that game, I was uh, I was actually happy for either team winning because my, my my hatred of Alabama is completely phony. I'm not from down south. You know, I just picked LSU because I thought that Les Miles was a guy. I, th- I thought he was crazy. He's eating grass and shit, you know, going for it on fucking field goals, and having the field goal kicker run down the fucking street and slippers, scoring touchdowns. I was like, hey, I'll fucking go with these guys, you know? So it just became fun to root against them. But it was also, I'm a big fan of history, Nia, and uh, he would have tied Paul Bear Bryant if he won another championship. And um, also Lawhead, was saying that Alabama was overrated because the SEC was weak. and then I, So then I was kind of rooting for Alabama to beat a team that just fucking beat the shit out of the Ohio State Buckeyes 31 to nothing. Um, I was kind of hoping for that. But then also, you got you to root for Clemson. They're the underdog, right? It's phenomenal. This is how much of a Cleveland guy, okay, Jason Lawhead is. Well, I love Jason, okay, but he has the disease of being a Cleveland sports fan. When fucking uh, Clemson went up, because what happened was Clemson scored and it looked like they were going to win the game. And then Alabama went right down the field and gave him the old right there, Fred. And then Clemson came back when it looked like there was really no time left. And then they scored and then they won. Right. So when Clemson went up and it looked like Alabama wasn't going to have enough time to score, Jason texted me about their head coach saying he'll find a way to fuck this up. And I just wrote back, Jesus Christ, Jason, can you just believe? And then sure enough, Alabama goes down and scores a touchdown. And then Jason writes to me, you Clemson, you lose some. Almost trying to look like you win some, you lose some or something like that. And then Clemson goes down against all of his fucking negative vibes. They go ahead. They score the winning touchdown. You know what he says to me? He goes, ah, they should have won it last year. (laughs) They should have won it last year, too. They finally win a championship. That's what he says. Um, I don't know. Classic Cleveland guy. Anyways, Nia, uh, we're going to go see a double feature today, huh? Yes. You're taking me to, uh, what what am I going to go see? We're going to go see Moon. Are you having another one? (laughs) Yes. All right. It's the 511 rule. So that's two within five minutes. I know, but this isn't a real contraction. This is. Says the lady who never had a baby. What did you guys do at the end of this fucking thing up all of a sudden you heard a baby crying? Be like, Nia, what the fuck? <laughs> because I know, this is, they say you know. You know when the contraction is real and it's like a baby You got to know when to hold them. I don't think I'd be able know to like... Know when to fold them. Hang out and hold a know microphone. Know when to have a kid. 
Yeah. Know when to podcast, you never count your babies. <laughs> when you're sitting on the sofa, there'll be time enough for counting. When the Braxton Hicks is done. Right? Exactly. We're going to go see Moonlight, and then we're going to see Hidden Figures. This is all dependent. I mean, hopefully, yes, I won't be. Moonlight and water, Hidden Figures. My water won't oh, be Jesus. breaking during any of these. Is this, is this make Bill woke day? <laughs> <laughs> this is third trimester, guys, so I got to just agree with everything that she fucking says. So I got to go see that. Yep. And then I got to go see Hidden Figures where you know they're going to do a total overcorrection of fucking history. And they're going to have a bunch of guys running around like, what do we do? What do we do, ladies? It's supposed to be a really good movie, and I'm excited to see it. I know, and it's it's keyword based on a true story. Costner's in it. Kevin fucking Costner and my girl Janelle Monet, who I love so much. Remember when we went to see her in concert? We saw her before she was famous. That's right, famous, famous. We saw her when she was just famous. That's right. She was jumping around in the saddle shoes when she was opening for somebody. No, no, she closed. No, she opened for Jamie Lydell at the Avalon. Don't you remember? I had seen her in a magazine, and I was like, who is this? And I listened to some of her music, and I'm like, that's cool. And then do, 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 the do, week do, of our do, wedding, do, do, do. she was playing at the House of Blues, and I went to go see her a couple days before our wedding, and it was awesome. I went with my maid of honor. We took a picture together, and we ended up hanging out with her And what did her you band. have to eat afterwards? What? What did you have to eat afterwards? What, what are you saying? You're just getting into a lot of detail here. Oh, well, excuse me. <laughs> Sorry, I, I'm, I got cabin fever near. I sat yesterday, remember we were watching, we watched, I sat in the fucking, laid in bed with you. Yes. And we watched all those fucking game shows. Yeah. <laughs> we, we watched Jeopardy. Wait, for, for, no, first we watched the news. We've turned into a real old couple. We watched the news. And then we oh, watched Donald Trump yelling at that guy in CNN. Yep. And then we watched no, no, Jeopardy. You're fake news. You're fake news. I won't answer that. <laughs> Let her wa- talk. Don't be rude. <laughs> Don't be rude. Jeopardy. And then we watched uh, Wheel of Fortune. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, Wheel of Fortune so got boring. They, they got rid of all their fucking. They used to have the worst fucking prizes you had to pick from. Right. In the end, they'd be, it was always like for uh, $600, I'll, uh, I'll take the brass bed frame. <laughs> uh, for five sixty, dollars I'll take the grandfather clock. It's all like old people <laughs> shit. Uh, 300 bucks, I'll take the estate jewelry. Oh, my and, God, grandfather uh, clocks. I'll take, uh, put the rest on a gift certificate. <laughs> How many people went bankrupt? Every other fucking spin. Yeah. That nerdy black kid, every time he would get ahead. Calvin. Every time Calvin would get ahead. And he didn't win in the end. I was so sad. I mean, he won, but then he didn't get the final puzzle. I think all the Calvins of the world were winners that day. (laughs) All right. Patch Sajak is 70 years old. Alex Trebek is 76. Alex Trebek is under contract for another two years. This is this was why my fucking ADD reacts when I watch a game show. Because after a while, I can't watch those people excitedly yelling out letters. Do we see a C? There is two C's. You want to solve the puzzle or continue spinning? I'm going to continue spinning. (laughs) Three fifty. L. Is there an L? (laughs) Ooh, I'm sorry. There's no L. Calvin, spin the wheel. <laughs> fucking drove me insane. And I can't even fucking, I never know what it says. You could have everything but the vowels. I'm still going, ka, ta, kitchen titty. I can never understand. I never know what the fuck it is. <laughs> You're really good at Sports Jeopardy. We watched some Sports Jeopardy this week. We've been watching oh, yeah. a lot of game shows. That's true. Yep. Oh my God. You kill it at Sports Jeopardy. Yeah. The shit that doesn't matter in life. I, I know everything about. <laughs> um, speaking of which, how about those Celtics, huh? Sellies. Yep, I had a tough one against the fucking Raptors or the Huskies, whatever the fuck they were doing. Everybody's doing their throwback fucking jerseys. Um, Jesus Christ. I don't know one person's name on the Toronto Raptors, but I do know DeRozan now. Holy shit. That guy just, he hit a... I thought he kept saying DeRosa, and of course I just kept thinking of Joe. Joe DeRosa! I just kept thinking of Joe, Joe DeRosa, DeRosa the whole killed time. us. He killed us on the Raptors. There's the Photoshop right there. I want to see Joe DeRosa 
if you can find a fucking picture of him where he kind of looks confident, <laughs> um, you know, Joey, put it, put him in with that Toronto Huskies fucking throwback. That guy DeRozan killed this man. Finally, when he scored like his 41st point, I think he turned around and looked at our bench or at the crowd. And I, it was, I didn't even make me upset. It's just like, yeah, dude, you couldn't, you couldn't cover the guy. We had him. We fucking had him. Toronto was exactly who we thought they were. We let him off the hook. But that's a, um, that's, that's, you know, that's where we're at. We, we, fuck, we fucking beat everybody else except for the people we're going to run into in the late rounds of the playoffs. So uh, it's looking like the Celtics can win a round or maybe two. Who knows? Depending on, uh, but, you know, that was to become the second seed in the East, which would have been sweet, right? Because this number two plays seven there. You know this. Did you just fall asleep? No, 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 okay, no. I no. feel bad. No, no, no. no. I feel, you want to listen to me read out loud? <laughs> Bruins got the Predators. We beat the Blues the now other you're day. you're really going to put me to sleep. Oh, f- you know what? <laughs> but what about when I'm watching your fucking, your stupid reality shows? Huh? I actually enjoy them, right? I, I'm not fucking angry anymore, Nia. I try. I'm trying to keep the anger going. I don't have it anymore. <laughs> fucking meditating every day. You know what's funny, though, is me being less angry is like freaking you out. It's not freaking me out. I literally gave you props all yesterday when we, after the doctor's appointment, we sat there and we had a nice brunch. And I told you how proud I was. <laughs> <laughs> It used to it used to unnerve me a little bit when you were calm because I just thought yeah, something like, was wrong uh, with you. Everything okay? Like I was plotting <laughs> doing something to you. Oh my god. Our old friends here. Indochino. Indochino? Indochino is one of the largest made to measure menswear brands. And nothing says I'm happy in my relationship like getting some menswear. Get a high-quality suit made to your exact measurements. That's the fucking shit, man. When you got a job where you got to wear a suit, you come home like Hugh Beaumont in the beginning of Leave it to Beaver. Bespoke means? For a perfect fit. Uh, what's a spoke? Bespoke. What is bespoke? Isn't that a suit that's made exact just for you? Like all of Conor McGregor's suits. All right, that guy's got some nice suits. He t- oh, I'll tell you, that guy. I'll tell you, the only thing nicer than the way he knocks you out is the fucking suits he wears. All right. You will dress like Conor McGregor one day. I'm going to make it happen. Yeah, and then you'll see exactly how many pounds I need to lose. <laughs> the thing about Conor McGregor is he's in fucking, <laughs> fucking championship shape. Okay? I'm in palooka shape. <laughs> That's sweatpants and a hoodie. All right. You get, to, you get to customize your suit just the way you want it. Uh, here's how it works. Visit a showroom or shop online at Indochado.com. Pick from hundreds of fabrics, choose your customization from lapels to pleats to jacket linings and more. That's pretty cool. You can make a fucking really loud suit or something classy. Submit your body measurements. Place your... Oh, don't do that. Don't submit your fucking measurements over over the internet. Don't ever do it. You think online banking's bad? You submit your body measurements over the internet, the fucking Illuminati starts making a robot to your exact specifications. And all of a sudden, you know, everybody notices that you're acting weird. You know, you're kind of you, but you're not you. That's because the robot showed up one day and you were like, hey, me, what are you doing here? And then it gives you the old right there, Fred, of your fucking, you know, chokes you out with your tie that you got from Indochino. All right. Submit your body measurements. Place your order and wait for it to arrive in just four weeks. This week, my listeners can get any primo Indochino suit for just $389 at Indochino.com when entering Burr at checkout. That's 50% off the regular price price for a man made to measure premium suit. Plus, the shipping is free. That's Indochino.com. Chino. Promo code Burr for any premium suit for just $389 and free shipping. Uh, it's I N D O C H I N O. It's like China with an O. It's like how Sting would say China. I went to China. Um, incredible deal for a suit that will fit you better than anything off the rack ever could. All right. Oh, here we go. Blue Apron, everybody. Oh, Blue Ball Apron. Blue Apron. You know, not all ingredients are created equal. Oh, Jesus. Who wrote this? That fucking guy Trump just appointed to uh, Attorney General? <laughs> You know, not all ingredients are created equal. Some of them, uh, God likes better. You know, they're just smarter. You know, they got better hair. Uh, oh, they, they, they sunburn a little bit more. But maybe they can't dance. Okay, I'll give you that. 
Maybe they're better at doing a, a set shot than a jump shot. All right, fresh, high-quality ingredients make a real difference. So important to know. So it's important to know where your food comes from. Talk about your personal experience with Blue Apron. Oh, Jesus. You know, I always wore white aprons, then I put on a blue one, and, you know, I felt, I felt a little cooler. Affordable, for less than $10 per person per meal. Blue Apron delivers seasonal recipes along with pre-portioned ingredients to make delicious home-cooked meals. I have to tell you this, guys. If you want to fucking lose weight, if you're working out, the biggest goddamn thing, especially if you become old like me, is what the fuck you put into your body. So one of the big pains in the ass is going to the goddamn grocery store. Wouldn't it be wonderful if somebody just brought the shit to your fucking door all measured out and you could just throw it together after your workout? Wouldn't that be fucking perfect? Watch the pounds go away. Suddenly, you know, all of a sudden, it's like you're going around the world, looking over. All of a sudden, you can finally see the head of your dick again. You know? Oh, my God. You're like Christopher Columbus. Okay? And, you, and, you, and your junk is the fucking West Indies. Um, do we really have to read all of this? It's, they're fucking incredible meals, okay? Check out this week's menu and get your first three meals for free with free shipping by going to blueapron.com slash burr. You will love how good it feels and tastes to create incredible home-cooked meals with Blue Apron, so don't wait. That's blueapron.com slash burr. Blue Apron, a better way to cook. Um, each meal step by step, you know that shit, customized recipes, they got varieties, they got a different fucking recipe every goddamn day. All right, Lyft, everybody, L-Y-F-T, Lyft, you know about Lyft, right? This is like when you're in eighth grade and somebody brings up something, you know, something about sex, you know what that means, right? You're like, yeah, what does it mean? He doesn't know what it means. Um, it's the app that gets you a ride in minutes, on demand, 24-7, for less than the cost of a cab. Please include all of the following points during your read. Of course I will. Um, oh, you're back. I'm back. I was worried you went and just had a baby. <laughs> I had to bathroom. If you tried Lyft, you know what I mean. With Lyft, you just download the app, request a driver, and they show up in three and a half minutes on average. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking sweating, all coked up. That's really fast. Every driver delivers... Every... Every Lyft driver is fully vetted through their 10-point safety standard. Yeah, unlike those other cunts. As long as you got a head and fucking hands and, f- and a foot to step on the gas pedal, you got a job over there. Including criminal and DMV background checks. You know you'll get around quickly and safety. Lyft drivers are rated after every ride, so only the best stick around. You don't have to worry about getting into a filthy car with some creepy dude like they do over there. Um, I can't say the name of him, but it rhymes with boober. <laughs> Justin Boober. <laughs> Girl, you know you're the one for me. Whoa. That's boy band shit right there. With Lyft, <laughs> you can tip in the app, which obviously leads to happier drivers. Nine out of ten Lyft riders get a perfect five-star rating. That's because most people are too mean to give a 10, unlike Rich, like Rex Reed, right? No, they're too mean to not give a tip. Sorry. Some sort of gonk show shit just fell into my head. Bigger isn't always better, people. Lyft isn't the biggest ride-sharing app, but it's the fastest growing and the highest rated one. I'm talking quality over quantity. Thanks to Lyft, you got an easy way to avoid drunk driving. You never have to bum a ride. You never have to worry about parking. It's so perfect for fucking LA, I'll tell you that right now. A lot of people are actually getting ri- getting rid of their drivers, their cars, and, and uh, relying on Lyft to get around. This is a brutal read, sorry. And you know what? I don't blame them. Well, how the fuck do you know who I blame? I don't. It's a nice guest, Lyft. All right, right now, Lyft is offering our listeners a special deal. Get three free rides, up to $10 each. That's up to $30 value when you enter promo code BURR. Just download the free Lyft app today. And Wait, that's confusing. Lyft is offering our listeners a special deal. Get three free rides, up to $10 each. Oh, so they take you around the block? Whee! All right. You want to go to the store? That's going to cost you money. All right, um... Where am I? Promo code Burr, Bill Burr. Enter promo code Bill Burr at their website, whatever the fuck it was that I said. How was that? Was that a good read? How come they don't have their, they don't have their website in there, do they? Do you know I had an idea the other day, Nia? Can you believe that? I had an idea. You? You? <laughs> For what? Um, I want to buy like a 1948 like Cadillac limousine. Okay. Have the whole, just whatever the fuck, have the interior look nice. However, the outside of the car, whatever. Okay. Then you get the powertrain, the air shocks, all that shit, gas monkey, the whole fucking thing up. Right. Mm. And then I get a fucking, I get a driver. 
right? So I never have to deal with LA traffic again. Mm -hmm. I just jump in the back. I got a little fucking bar. Mm -hmm. I got a little humidor with some cigars. And then I got a little Wi Fi. Mm -hmm. So I can get hammered, smoke a cigar. Mm -hmm. Do some business calls, and then anytime just then, ride around the city all day. No, anytime <laughs> I want to go out, because out here the big thing with LA is there's no place to park. Like you'll pull into a strip mall that has like ten fucking businesses, and they have like you know fifteen parking spots, right? And they tell the employees not to park there, but you know they're gonna park there, and there's never any place to park. Sure. If this guy just pulled up, <laughs> and I just got out, <laughs> then he fucking drove away. How much do you think it would cost to have a to have a, a driver? Just a driver on call? Just to have a fucking driver, like... I mean... He just you, sits down the street like a creep reading the for, fucking newspaper. <laughs> yeah, I, I think <laughs> There's a, few, a lot of holes in this fucking... I think a few hundred bucks a day, for sure. Bullshit. Nobody's going to sit here for fucking 24 hours for 200 bucks. Yeah, they would. Getting car ass. Yeah, yeah, they would. You can definitely hire a private driver that's just on call for you. You say, hey, can you get here at 10 or whatever? I got to go here, here, here and just hang out until I need you again. If you pay somebody enough, they'll do it. Why wouldn't I? You know what it is? I like driving too much. But there's those times, like whenever you go into a fucking game and all that, I'm basically describing having my own lift. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah. Because I don't like it because now it's just one person who knows where I live. Whereas those other people, <laughs> they know where everybody knows where you fucking live and then they fucking track you. Yeah, it's like weird. Justin Boober does. <laughs> Justin Boober. <laughs> yeah. Those guys do that all the fucking time. They start tracking you, then they listen, they hack into your phone, they start listening to you, eating corned beef hash. <laughs> Looking at your rave drugs ass <laughs> search. Yeah, watching somebody take a straw and blow cocaine up your ass as you're going like, hey, you know, I don't feel any higher than uh I guess there was really no reason to do that. Let's just do it through our nasal passages like we did before. Yo, that's like something Jackass would have done back in the day. And they would all be <laughs> laughing their fucking asses off. That was the part of the movies I could I'm never... I'm sure they've done it. I could never, like... They, those parts of the movie where there was, there was always those parts where they would just do something like a pubic hair sandwich or put that little toy car up his ass. Yeah, do you think Steve-O never had coke blown up his ass? I mean, I'm sure for, that was his thing for like two weeks. No, I don't think he did that. He's a very conventional person, okay? The man, <laughs> when he steps away from the camera... He's very conservative. <laughs> right. <laughs> I've done stand-up with him a couple of times. He's a fucking great guy. Uh, yeah, you've said that. You said he's like a really nice person. Yeah, with an, with an incredible fucking like, sense of humor. Right. Really, really funny fucking guy. Um, all right, LegalZoom. This is the last one, everybody. <clears throat> LegalZoom. Start of a new year is a perfect opportunity to hit, the be- to hit the reset button for a fresh start, to finally get around to things you've been putting off for too long. And LegalZoom.com is where you make it happen. So whether you take control of your family's future with an estate plan or finally get your dream business up and running, don't let legal questions hold you back. <coughs> Sorry. It just seems there's always such dry copy with these people. It seems, you know, you know that, that black dude who does the, uh, was it Allstate? Dennis Haysbert. Yeah, Dennis Haysbert. Are you in good hands? He's Jewish? I didn't know that. What? Is he, was he, is he Sammy Davis Jr.'s son? Because I know he converted. His last name is Haysbert. Oh, I think he said Haysburg. A Haysboy. <laughs> <laughs> no. All right. The legal world can be challenging to navigate. That's why LegalZoom was created over 15 years ago, to provide you with the tools you need, the confidence you already have, and the know-how to wrap up your legal needs. And since LegalZoom isn't a law firm, you don't have to worry about expensive hourly fees. Instead, you can get legal advice at flat rates from the network from the networks of attorneys in 48 states. They'll help you with the right estate plan or answer the questions you have for running your business. Call to action. Make 2017 the year you get your life in order and get special savings when you enter promo code BURR at checkout. LegalZoom.com. There you go. All right, let's end and let's talk about uh, Meryl Streep's Golden Globe speech. What did you think about that, Nia? Did you think it was historically accurate? Was it something that needed to be said? It was something that I wasn't surprised that she said. She's been, uh, you know, she does this. I wasn't mad at it. I didn't, I mean. The only thing I took offense to, Nia? Yeah, I wasn't mad at it. Aside from the usual thing of like, oh, good. Someone who pretends to be somebody else is going to tell us how the world needs to be run. All right? You thought it was a little, what's your fa- What's your new word that you learned? Oh, sanctimonious. You thought it was a little sanctimonious? I really don't know what that means. <laughs> <laughs> a little, 
<laughs> little holier than thou. I, I just did, oh, there was always just cringeworthy moments when everyone from uh, Margaret Moore, or whatever his fucking name is, Michael Moore. Margaret. <laughs> and, and, and Meryl Streep and all these people are going to be like, guys, you know, we're living in a really dangerous time right now. And I just really think it's really important for us all to hold each other and your loved ones a little bit closer. Just that it's filler. It's fucking filler. It's just filler. I just don't I, don't, I don't, I don't fucking buy it. And then in the end, you fucking attack bread and circus, you know, football and MMA. Yeah. I'm like, like we're I all like, a bunch. I like of- movies and I like MMA. Yeah. How come they have to be separate? But um, the majority of her message, I thought. I, I mean, think it was, defending it was, yourself is an art form. Huh? Defending yourself is an art form. From debating Mixed martial arts, all the way to that which spinning heel kick Joe arts. Rogan can do. Um, yeah, well. Like I said, this is, this is you know, Meryl and other actors like her, they have a platform and they feel passionate about it and so they speak on Mia, it. You give me I one, don't think there's anything wrong with that. Give me one fucking cause and I'll give you the speech right now off the top of my head with every fucking cliche. And I, and I would be called brave if anybody gave a fuck about me. Go ahead, give me a topic. Well, what do you care about? No, you, uh, that's not the point. The point is give me something I don't even know anything about and I could still give the speech. Go oh, um, saving the whales. You know, when you look at the earth from space, which so few of us get the chance to do, like I did in this movie when I pretended to be an astronaut, (laughs) most of it is water. And the biggest thing in the water are whales. And like us, they also communicate. And just because we don't understand them, let me finish, just because we don't understand them does not mean that they are not saying something and they do not deserve a voice that needs to be heard. And despite the current administration, I vow to continue fighting for these whales. Thank you. Sorry, I kind of petered out. But you know what I mean? I still fucking did it. I still did it. And then maybe the next day, be like, it was so brave. I loved his cummerbund. You know, he was glowing. He thanked his wife. Mm-hmm. He thanked the whales. He took his shiny thing. And then he fucking, you know, I don't know, took a fucking stretch SUV, burning low lead fucking gas into the fucking sunset. Right. Yeah, I just don't. I, I don't. I don't give a flying fuck. I don't need a fucking lecture from an actor. On what's going on. It didn't feel like a lecture. It just felt like she was passionately talking about something that she felt strongly about. And you know what? If Hillary Clinton got in, who fucking blew the bankers in 2008, do you think she would have given a speech about that? No. How many people that they've crushed? How many people are upside down in a fucking house right now? No. They wouldn't have given speeches. Of course she wouldn't have. Why? Because she wears a blue bra and fucking Trump wears fucking red underwear. (laughs) <laughs> it's fucking stupid It's like listening to the Yankees and Red Sox fans I, I, I don't know, I'm, I'm, I'll be on it But this has been this podcast <laughs> And I want you guys to know I don't feel that I'm any different than you <laughs> I'm walking around right now I'm not special, okay? I'm just a person that decided to listen to themselves And I feel that that's what everybody needs to do And that's not what we're teaching in the educational system do you not have something that you feel strongly about that you wouldn't maybe use your platform to discuss? There's a bunch of shit I feel strongly about, but I don't feel like I'm the fucking be all end all in my point. My, my opinion. Be, you don't have to be the, the be all end all, but you have a podcast that you do twice yeah, a week. Yeah, the Flake The Flake Gate. I feel so fucking have, passionate about that. So you have two times a week where you have a guaranteed audience of thousands upon thousands of people listening to you. I can guarantee you something, Nia. If right? I started going Wait, Meryl Street finish. two let times a finish. fucking week, I would have no podcast. Let oh, I would be finish. podcasting, but no one would be listening. Let me finish. You're being rude. You're, You're being, being rude. rude. <laughs> You're being rude. No, you fake news. You fake news. <laughs> And you had a chance to talk about like, hey, this is a thing that I really feel strongly about. I feel like people should know. I want to share. You don't, you don't think that you should do that? No. Oh, okay. Well, there you go. How dumb are people? They don't know what's important. People know what's important. People are not dumb. I've traveled around. People, I, I, I don't walk around. People are like, oh my God, Bill, talk slower. 
I can't get my head around your no, fucking... No, it's not that. It's not about like patronizing people. It's like, hey, here's this thing that came up recently. This is how I feel about it. I feel strongly about it, and here's why. Maybe you feel this way too. Maybe you didn't know about this issue. Maybe this will maybe help you open up a little bit more about it. Hey, you know? that's a great delivery. Somebody ought to try that sometime. Are you making fun of me? No. Meryl Streep was not delivering it that way. Right. Well, she I was mean, wagging her fucking finger. She wasn't wagging. She was getting a lifetime achievement award, and she got up there. That's and like she an was honorary like... degree. <laughs> 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 what were you in? <laughs> what were you in this year? Nothing. A life. Why is she getting a life? They've given her every fucking trophy out there. They got to give her another one. Yeah, she's Meryl Streep. Listen, she gets all the awards. Uh, you know. Okay. Okay. I mean. I'm not saying she shouldn't get the fucking awards. But why can't she? But why does it bother you so much that she gets up there and she talks about what she's passionate about? No, it doesn't bother me so much. I'm just choosing to make fun of it. Oh. That's all. <laughs> oh, okay. No, I find it just cringeworthy when I, I don't fucking want to listen to, uh, you know, George but, Kennedy talk to me about the fucking ozone layer, even though he just passed away. You know what I mean? Charles Bronson for you're fucking. Not, well, the thing is, you're not big on award shows. Period. I think they're silly. Right. And then the speech. I understand why you have to do it. I think a lot of people that go to them, Mm -hmm. go to them because you have to. Right. Because you have to. Because what it is, is you go in there like, uh, you know, you got to support the project that you're in. Like if Memphis for Family gets fucking nominated for something, I would go. Yeah. And I'd go up there, they'd fucking stand up there. But I mean, you got to do it. Yeah, you have to do it because that's that's part of the thing that you signed up for. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's good, you know. If it, if it w- wins shit, mm-hmm. the, the writing staff they make more money because then they, they get to be like, oh, we, you know, I wrote on an Emmy award wooden show or whatever the fucking an, an SB whatever the fuck you get right. Mm-hmm. You have to play the fucking game. Yes. So just go up there and say thank you. <laughs> get the I fuck appreciate off the it. Take your shiny thing <laughs> and take a fucking walk. Like this is the thing. I don't like Trump. Okay, mm-hmm. I don't like the fucking shit he's doing. I don't like the people he's picking. But I don't need Meryl Streep. To, like, I wasn't. I was sitting there like, oh wait a minute, he's not a good guy. Like, oh thank you, Meryl Streep. <laughs> thank you for squeegeeing my fucking third eye. <laughs> I don't know. I think it's a. Uh, I think it's one of those things where you're famous too fucking long, and you just start thinking that what like everything that you're doing is a little more important than it is. You know what I mean? I have to be honest with you, Nia. Like, before I got into this business, no one ever, like, I'm trying to think, like, uh, at least using that technique, no one ever influenced me. Like, I, like um, there's people that influence me, like, oh, I want to listen to more of that music. Mm-hmm. Or, uh, oh, wow, there's, there's a part of the world like that. I'd like to see that. Mm-hmm. But, like, you know, I, just, I don't see how, like, somebody making, like, a fucking three-minute speech it's going to have more of an impact than someone that you live your day-to-day with or your parents. Mm-hmm. You know, that's like that, that, that Dr. Phil shit, like when they solve problems and like, oh, we watch that shit too. Oh, right. We watched Dr. Phil too. Oh, wow, that we... dude living in the truck. Oh, and we had watched like Judge Judy. We had a whole like stay-at-home mom day. <laughs> this, dude, this dude was living in a truck with his kid. And at night he was in, a, during the night he was in a shelter and then he drove around in the truck and it was just... <laughs> And it, with his kid, with his two-year-old, uh, feeding him like Gatorade and sodas and stuff. Yeah, and he goes, you know what? Sometimes the kid doesn't eat, but, you know, I always try to make sure, you know, I, I, I feed him when I can, make sure he's got plenty of sugar and caffeine, he said. Yeah, he did like say that, was, that. Like that was a fucking like good thing. Like that was thing. good. He doesn't, get, he doesn't get him like bottles of water. He gets yeah. him Gatorade and Coca-Cola. This was all Yeah, but you know Dr. something? Phil. That kid looked fine. No, and, he did And didn't. they never showed his face. What do you mean? No, that was the music, Nia. That was the music. No, he looked like a feral animal no, running around. No, he didn't. He looked like a cute little kid. Yeah, he did. But he also looked like a little, I don't know. Kids are dirty. Not my I, kid. I, I'm going to tell you something right now. That kid's going to be able to figure out shit more than most of these goddamn millennials, you know, that sat there with their clean fucking fingernails, <laughs> lice-free heads in their fucking <laughs> laptops. Lice-free heads. <laughs> <laughs> all right, I got to get on with my day here. Um, all right, that's it. That's Let's the podcast. Let's go to the movie. Let's all go to the lobby. Let's, Let's all go, go to the, the lobby. lobby. Let's all go to the lobby and negate what we did on the elliptical. All right, go fuck yourselves. Have a nice weekend, you cunts. I'll talk to you on Monday.
Monday morning podcast, and this is something I have to start off. I got to start right out of the gate talking about because someone had uh, someone was bitching at me that they liked my page, but they couldn't uh, they couldn't shut off my podcast so they could watch the other videos. Um, if you are new to my page and you're listening to this podcast and you're already bored with it, all you got to do is just scroll down. It's right on the right hand side, and there's a little X. You just click on it. You'll burn half a calorie doing it, and then you can do whatever else you want to do on the site. All right? Okay, Bruce, can you figure that out? Um, anyways, what's going on? How are you? How was your week? Did you have a nice week, everybody? I actually had a great fucking week. Don't you hate when people do that? They ask you about something, and they don't really give a fuck. They're just setting it up so they can talk about it. It's like, I knew I had an awesome week. So rather than just coming out and being braggadocious, if that's even a fucking word, and just saying I had an awesome week, I had to actually act like I was a considerate human being and remotely gave a fuck about what your week was like. I had an awesome week. This is what I want to get to. You know, when people do that, and then you start to talk about your week, and like, they, they start doing that nod, that wrap it up, that really hyper-quick fucking chipmunk nod, like eh, 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 eh. maybe a little circular motion with the left hand, like let's get to the point so I can get on and just download all my shit onto your spirit. All right. Wow, what an intro. That's not going to make you want to listen to this. Anyways, this was basically my awesome week. I went to the improv in Tampa, Florida. I have to say that just in case there's a city in Ohio also named Tampa, because I know they have Miami, Ohio, which is fucking hilarious. Goddamn frozen state. I live in West Palm Beach, Florida. No, Ohio. It's just outside of Dayton. Um, yeah, so I was, I cannot begin to tell you guys how much dread I was looking at my first two gigs of this year, Tampa, Florida, and Houston, Texas, both cities I was looking at with dread. I'm still looking at Houston with dread. Why, you ask? Is it because you don't like Tampa, Bill? Did is, you got something against the oil makers in Houston? No. It's because the last time I went to both those towns combined, I think 31 people came up to came out to see me. You know? And I'm not going to lie to you guys. I'm an older fellow at this point. And uh, going on the road can be hard sometimes. And if you don't believe me, just talk to that Filipino who's singing for Journey. He's already bitching. Fucking little pussy. Can you believe that guy? Fucking guy singing karaoke in a third world country, and now he's playing the goddamn fucking L.A. Forum. And he's complaining about how lonely the road is. Because he's been out there for fucking six weeks. Jesus Christ. You know, I can't tell if that guy is just a whiny little cunt or if, he, or if he's a fucking, maybe he just knows who he is, and he can actually step outside of this, going, you know, dude, I, I really just wanted to fucking sing karaoke, and, uh, you know, singing with you guys was awesome, and I'm over it, because I know what really makes me happy, my friends and my family, and making little bok choy as I squat in my hut, or whatever the fuck it is that they do over there, typical American, if I don't know where you're from, you know, I think you're squatting in a hut eating bok choy. I don't even know what bok choy is, and I've had it. I think it's Korean. Is that kimchi? Um, but whatever, fuck that guy. You know what I mean? Why can't he just be honest and just be like, you know what? Um, I thought I liked Journey's music when I was singing it once every other Tuesday at um, King Fung Wu's Bar and Grill in fucking <laughs> the Philippines. But, uh, you know, singing it every night is kind of fucking boring. And I'm out here with a bunch of fucking geezers who are trying to recapture some other shit. And one of them, the guy on the keyboards, is still wearing his tight pants. And it's just something I, I don't like seeing, but I don't have enough say in the band, being as I'm a fucking contest winner. Jesus Christ, can you imagine the awkwardness on the road? Like this fucking guy, you know, 
they actually went through all the bullshit, the band, okay? They ate fucking spaghetti every goddamn week, whatever the fuck they did. They lived in a van, and they fucking down by the river, and they fucking made it, you know? They made it, and then they got in a big fight with Steve Perry because he thought he could go on his own making oh sherry and some other forgettable sappy shit. And, uh, you know, lawsuits, all that behind-the-music shit. And now they're back on tour again, and they just fucking plucked this guy, you know, up out of a tsunami. And now he's playing the... I just don't understand. How, how do you fucking bond? You know what I mean? That'd be like me. Last time I played quarterback, I think was just fucking some pickup game in eighth grade. And all of a sudden, I'm fucking... You know, I show up in week... Week 15 for the Baltimore Ravens. I don't know. You know, Phil, you made the point. Why don't you get back to your great week? Hey, why don't I own up to the fact that I told you guys last week that my, the Carolina Panthers were my dark horse and that I believed in Jake DeLone. And what happens? I jinxed him. You heard of the Sports Illustrated jinx? There's a new jinx in town. And you're fucking listening to it. So my apologies to everybody in Carolina. Um... In my mind, I'm going to Carolina. All right, let me get back to my awesome week. So anyways, yeah, last time I went to Tampa, nobody fucking showed up. And uh, and it was really disheartening because uh, I think at that point my HBO special was out and that type of thing. And that's when I, it really just hit me how fucking hard this business is. And I was really like, wow, man, what the fuck do I have to do? So I went to Tampa. And what happened? I showed up, and a bunch of fucking people showed up, and they were great crowds. And I got, like, you know, a couple, two or three partial standing ovations. I was killing it. I was having a great time after my nice month of rest and relaxation. A bunch of fine-ass bitches came out to the club, baby. Um, No, a lot of good-looking broads down there, and, and I probably drank too much fucking two out of three nights. It was a good time. Went on that guy Cowhead show. If anybody from that show is listening, um, tell him I said thank you. It's a fucking great show. I'm like, this is how cool. This is how great the whole week was. I went in to the Cowhead show. Right off the bat, the guy's totally cool. Right off the bat, he knows how to give a great interview. I don't have to do material. We're just vibing. Everything's flowing. And then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, a guy, one of my buddies from high school, when I had season tickets to the Patriots in 1989 when they sucked. We used to all pile in the back of his landscaping truck with a half keg of fucking beer and a bag of chips. He fucking calls up. Find out he's living down there. Next thing you know, we're on the radio together talking about shit we did 20 years ago. And if that wasn't cool enough, they had an electronic drum kit there. And they came out of the radio break playing the Immigrant Song, and I was on the drums playing for, I just was fucking having this total geek moment. And then I went down to the club, and it was fucking, you know, I'm not going to say it's packed, but I got into the upper deck, you know. Just picture a, uh, just picture an Atlanta Braves game when they finally make it to the fucking, the the NLCS. That's how full the club was. <laughs> it was about three quarters full. Fuck you guys. I was happy with that. I thought there was going to be nobody down there. So I want to thank everybody down there. So Houston. You got to come through for me, okay? When I go out and I play that improv that's underneath that overpass and that strip mall where evidently there's a lot of violence. Who the fuck did the research on that one? Anyways, I also like when you walk into that one how it looks like Scarface's lobby. (laughs) It's just a fucking... I don't fucking know. Anyways, why am I shitting on a club that I'm going to? No, it's a great time. It's a great part of town and... uh, all I know is I got a, I finally got my new hour together and I'm really happy and it's it's really it's it's uh if things are going good so just fucking come out, all right? For the love of God. But either way, even if it sucks, I'm going to South Park Guitars. So I'll still have a good time. And I'm gonna go skating at your fucking mall. Cause I'm a fake. Alright. So let's get into the podcast here. So I have hyped what I have coming up. I'm gonna be at the, the improv in Houston. And uh, these are the dates, uh, 22nd, 23rd, and 24th. Go to improv2.com for all information. 
And I'll be selling my brand new DVD. I'll be standing there like a fucking jackass in the end because I have no pride. Um, actually, I decided something um, that, you know, because there's, there's a lot of guys who are like, you know, once they get past a certain level, they don't want to stand there selling merchandise at the end of their show because um, you feel like an idiot sometimes. And um, I got to admit, I don't. I actually like kind of meeting people after shows as long as they're not drunk morons slapping me too hard in the back and spitting on me inadvertently. I don't mind that shit, but this is something that I'm not doing anymore. Or at least I want to say I'm not going to. I'm who's kidding who. I'm going to do it because there's nothing worse than bringing DVDs home in your luggage. Your fucking bag weighs like 80 pounds. But, like, I hate when I work a club where I have two shows and however the crowd walks in, there's not enough room to have the next crowd stand there and have the other crowd walk out. So they send the first crowd out the side door, and if you want to sell your merch, you're literally standing outside the club. And I cannot begin to tell you how much of a fucking moron. I I see it in people's eyes, too, when they see me. Like I was doing, like I was standing outside the improv in uh, Tampa, and they have like, it's one of those, you know, those deals. They got like a sports bar, a movie theater. It's all like this one little, like it's like an outdoor mall. And I'm literally standing there. And people are going, excuse me, excuse me. People who don't give a fuck about the show, who have no idea who I am, and, and audience members who like give a shit who I am, really see where I am in this business in that moment. If some plumber just goes, hey, uh, hey, pasty, why don't you get the fuck out of the way so I can go see, uh, well, you know, oh my God, what Benjamin Buttons? This is going to be a disjointed podcast. I don't give a fuck. All right, I'm on some new diet. I fucking just had eight egg whites. I'm never doing that again, man. It's just fucking brutal. I saw that movie Benjamin Buttons. Bill, can you stick with the subject? Yeah, so that's what I'm saying. I don't want to fucking stand outside a club and do that shit anymore. Okay, I'll stand in the club. But there's a table, you know. I'll even make the change. I don't give a shit. But I think I'm going to draw the line at I'm not going to stand outside a venue dealing with the elements and people on their way to a fucking Applebee's as I try to hawk my merchandise. Because uh, I, I got to admit, I felt I felt uh, felt pretty uh, pretty pathetic, pretty fucking pathetic. So, um, anyways, let's let's get on let's get on with the podcast here. And uh, remind me to talk about Led Zeppelin later. I don't know how you're going to do that, so I might as well talk about it now. I'm pretty devastated because I fucking loved that group. And I had heard rumors, and I kind of knew they had a couple blues songs that they reworked in air quotes, and they didn't quite give people credit for it. And uh, evidently, it goes way beyond that. And uh, there's some stuff on YouTube. I'm always looking at Led Zeppelin shit because I'm a huge John Bonham fan. And somehow I stumbled across this thing, because I guess the YouTube guy was just on Howard Stern. So there was a lot of shit on them about them stealing material. And uh, all I can say is, wow. It went beyond a couple of songs. It went into... I mean, every song but two songs on their first album, half the songs on their second album. They're even trying to say that they ripped off the intro to Stairway to Heaven, they had like an opening act on tour with them. I just, I don't know. I don't know how to process it. And not only that, I just brought my bought my nephew the fucking box set, the entire digitally remastered, remastered box set of Led Zeppelin for Christmas, you know? Thinking I'm the cool uncle, and I just gave him a uh, a box of stolen shit. That's just fucking brutal. Check out that Jeff Beck album, Truth. I just downloaded it. How many more times? He literally takes a section straight up from the guy. But, you know, I think that's on those other guys. They should have just fuck. You know you know what it is? You can't do anything. There's nothing you can do about it. They fucking steal. They get credit. They get taken into the Hall of Fame. It's just fucking brutal. All right, that was a bummer. All right, did I just say a bummer? That actually kind of worked because I was talking about music from the 60s. That was a bummer, man. What a drag. Um... All right. Anyway, so last week I got up on my soapbox a little bit, or my ottoman, if you want to get technical. And (laughs) 
I was talking about last week how I'm sick of going into these places of business. And with this new technology, they're firing fellow Americans and they're making me do the the fired employee's job. And to me, that is not progress. All right? That is uh, adding another person out there who's going to be competing for me for a job while I do their fucking job for free. So I asked people what they thought about that shit. You know, I'm talking specifically about going into a grocery store and they want me to check myself out. Okay? As if I'm somehow going to do it faster than a cashier. That seems to be the illusion here that that makes it faster. You know what I mean? Somebody who actually works there and does it 9,000 times a day so they don't even have to look at the fucking keyboard. Goddamn Stevie Wonder fucking blowing through it, you know? And somehow I'm going to be quicker than that, you know? So anyways, I asked people what they thought about it. And uh, I got interesting. I got, you know, basically I took two of them that kind of summed up everybody's shit. And then I switched up some of the guitar parts and I called it Stairway to Heaven. No, wait a minute. All right. Um, Somebody said, I agree with you. New technologies often make certain jobs obsolete, but they also create new ones. In this case... I don't think there are enough low-level jobs out there to start getting rid of cashiers. Um, yeah, and I, I definitely agree with you. I, I don't feel like... Dude, they're making you... You're walking into the grocery store as the customer. They're making you be a cashier for free. And everyone's sitting there going, oh, it's quicker. This is what this guy's saying. This guy's, saying, this, this guy's trying to go, Bill, as far as the self-checkout line in grocery stores, I can't agree with your take on the situation. Any place I have seen with self-checkout lines still have regular lines as well. Can you believe that point? Any place I've seen with self-checkout lines still have the regular lines as well. Obviously, they're just not overnight going to get rid of everybody. They're teaching you how to be a cashier for free. And once we all get it down, eventually they're going to get rid of everybody. The same way they're doing it with like those tolls. Those easy pass things that, are, you know, remember there was only one easy pass line. Now it's down. There's only one toll booth line. And sometimes you get off the exit. There's no toll booth. You just better have the fucking right amount of change. You know, and I guess that does make it easier, but also lets them know where the fuck you are, which annoys the shit on me. But I wasn't bitching about that. Dude, the only reason why 10 out of 10 lines are not automated is because it's a new technology. And that's why they have the douchebags standing there teaching you how to fucking use. They're teaching you how to be a cashier so they can fire other cashiers. And then they don't have to pay cashiers and you as the customer who used to just come up with your food and stand there and rub your fucking balls looking around. I mean, don't you understand the arrogance of that? Hey, why don't you come into my store, pick out what you want, you figure out what the fuck you owe me, pay me, stick, you stick it in the bag and then get the fuck out of my store. You don't find a problem with that? Anyways, this guy continues to say, I don't think anyone is losing any jobs or that grocery stores are going to turn into self-serving only venues. I'm sorry, but I'm going to stand in li- I'm not going to stand in line behind the soccer mom who's buying enough groceries to last the entire winter. Meanwhile, all I got is a box of cereal, cereal and milk, and now I have to tell myself I'm doing a good thing for the workforce by resu- refusing to serve myself and the self-checkout line. Not in this lifetime, my fine feathered friend. He really thought he made a great point there. Well, dude, you know what? I think you're a retard. What do you think about that? Who stands in line in front of, behind somebody who's got enough fucking groceries for the winter when all you have is a box of cereal and milk? Have you ever heard of the express checkout? Eight items or less? Have you never noticed that? I don't know. You know what? That that uh, that just fucking pissed. That whole thing just pissed me off. You know what? That is great, dude. Yeah, stand in line and go do a job you didn't have to do before, and do it for free, and put somebody else out of work, and tell yourself that it's fucking quicker. The same way they're doing that on TV, where they got that commercial and they try to mind fuck you into thinking that using your ATM card is quicker than using cash. You know? Come on, man. Use your fucking head. You know what they're doing. They're phasing out cash. So now there's no more under-the-table bullshit out there, and you're going to get taxed even fucking more. And they'll know where you are at all fucking times. That's what they're doing. All right? Debit cards are not quicker than cash. And I love the commercial that they have. I don't know if they're still running it, 
but they literally used homophobia to try to convince you. You know, they 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 put into that part of your brain. Hey, I'm not sucking dick. I'm going to use a fucking debit card. They basically had this commercial. Where they had a bunch of people buying uh, Steelers jerseys. I remember. They're all buying football jerseys, and they're going through the line, and everybody's using a debit card, and they're playing that Bugs Bunny music, dun 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 da 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 dun 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 da 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 da, and everything's going great, and it's and people are swiping it once, and they're just grabbing the bag, and and the whole transaction takes literally two seconds, okay, which has not been my experience ever. The guy fucking tries to put the password in. It doesn't fucking work. They swipe it three times, and the cashier finally spins the thing around, tries to do it themselves. It's a big fucking pain in the ass. So anyways, after all these guys cruise through, then this, uh, you know, buying football jerseys, this fucking guy comes up to buy tennis balls with a pink sweater tied around his neck, and he's he's paying cash. And the second he takes out the cash, you know, that, that music just comes to a dead halt, and everybody's staring at him. You get it, you know? Football, men, tennis, pink sweater, fag. It's just fucking unreal. I don't know. You know what? Fuck this shit. I'm just going to go live in the fucking mountains. I'm tired of trying to convince people. I had this stupid girl in the front row. I was explaining the whole fucking thing to her, and she's like, still told me at the thing that she was going to use the automated checkout at the cash- at the at the grocery store. Cause, and I go, why? She goes, because it's quicker. How how is it How is it quicker? You know, you could teach me how to change a fucking tire. I'm not going to do it quicker than a fucking mechanic. Or change my oil, or what? I don't fucking whatever, whatever, whatever. Stand in those fucking lines, you fucking drones. Uh, see how childish I get when people have a different opinion. This is why I can't sustain a relationship. Okay, let's get to, let's get to the question. You know what it really is? I'm, I'm just fucking annoyed that I found out that one of the groups that I loved has stolen all this goddamn music. I mean, dude, it just, you know, you know what's funny about Led Zeppelin, too, is they always had that, that cheesy shit where they were just, like, trying to say that they all sold their soul to the devil. Everybody sold their soul to the devil, except for John Paul Jones. And that's why all the, that horrific shit happened. Like, John Bonham died, Robert Plant got in a car accident, and his kid died mysteriously. And uh, Jimmy Page, I don't know, he fucking, his eyes got all squinty. I don't know what the fuck happened. What happened to Jimmy Page? He didn't lose a finger. That was a guy from Black Sabbath. What happened to Jimmy Page? He had a castle. I don't know. Something happened to Jimmy Page. Something happened bad to everybody. But you know what the reason? It wasn't because they sold their soul. It was karma for stealing all those fucking songs. He got inducted into the Hall of Fame. All right. Whatever. Okay. Anyways. You know what? I should have been more mature about that. Some people don't fucking agree with me on those... Uh, those automated lines. I just, I don't, I, to me, it's clear as fucking day. It's clear as fucking day. Yeah, I'm not 100% against shit. Like, dude, when I go to the airport, sometimes that automated shit is quicker. Like, when you go to check yourself in for a flight, that's definitely, definitely fucking quicker. But when I get on the plane and they start telling me I need to fold up my blanket to help expedite the cleaning of the cabin, go fuck yourself. All right, that's for the cleaning crew. I'm sorry they fired the cleaning crew. I'm not doing that fucking job. I did my job. I got on the plane. I said a prayer on takeoff and landing that we wouldn't crash. I didn't try to open the emergency door or charge the cockpit. I'm done. You know, I'm not taking out a fucking lint brush and a crumb bar and cleaning up my fucking area. Go fuck yourself. I don't work for the airline. Here we go. Hey, and I'm getting a new laptop this week, so this is the last time you're going to hear that fucking annoying clicking sound. Trying to do it smoother. All right, let's get to the podcast questions for the week. And I got to tell you guys, this is going to be a short podcast this week because uh, I have a ton of shit to do. Um, why can't I just be nicer? Um, I appreciate you guys all listening to my podcast. Well, I got to, do I have to go back into the, the 700 Club guy? You know, put your hands on your laptop screen and let's say a prayer for Jesus. Um, no, I appreciate all you guys listening and all that type of stuff. And uh, we're going to be blowing through it. Why can't you have a sensitive moment, Bill? Why can't you open up? Okay, let's take a deep breath. Let it out. I appreciate the fact that all you guys listen to my podcast, but uh, I have a lot of um, things that I have to get done today. I can't fucking do it. I got a lot of shit to do. All right. 
question number one. Uh, Bill, you often talk on the cast of how people shouldn't work certain jobs that help the man. <laughs> And fuck the common folk. One of my jobs I currently work because I'm broke is essentially telemarketing. And I go home from it feeling dirty. But whose fault is it, really? Mine or the dopes I'm fucking? And where exactly do you draw the line of what jobs to not work according to your personal standards? All right. Uh, Telemarketing, I mean, that's not making me do a job. So, I mean, as annoying as it is, you can... You can sign yourself up for that don't call list on the internet if you guys want to look that up. I did that and nobody ever fucking calls me. And uh, um, But I mean, I don't know what you're telemarketing. You say you go home feeling dirty. I'd have to know what it is that you do. Because you're like, I feel really guilty, but whose fault is it? Mine or the dopes I'm fucking? So obviously, whatever you're selling them is bullshit and you know it's bullshit but you're telling them that it's it's great shit. So uh, whose fault is that? Uh, that's yours. I'm going to say that's yours. You know? You know, dude, you know it's yours. You go home feeling dirty. You're obviously doing some shit you don't want to do. But I understand any port in a storm. I don't know. If you're selling people sham wows like morons like me, and I buy the fucking things, you know, you're not really hurt. I don't know what the fuck. I'd have to know what you're selling. You know, if you're selling those fucking mortgages that screwed over this economy, then you should feel dirty. But uh, I don't know. I don't fucking know. I'm trying to think. You know something? I, I used to telemarket, so I can't judge you. I used to sell newspaper subscriptions over the phone. And, you know, when you're just doing that sort of cold calling, the only weapon you have is to lie your ass off. And the only way I got through it was trying to make the guy next to me laugh. I used to go by Bill McDonald and uh, the other guy, what the fuck did he go? One of the guys I worked with actually went by the name Keith Crowder, who was the name of one of the guys who actually played on the Boston Bruins. And we were in Boston. (laughs) He used to call people up. Hey, how you doing? This is Keith Crowder calling from the Boston Globe. And and people would just, every once in a while, some would be like, oh, yeah, Keith Crowder. He'd be like, oh, yeah. You gotta be what you play for the Bruins? No, 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 no. He'd be either go, it's my cousin, or he would just say that, oh, yeah, I get that all the time. You know what I mean? Like if your name was actually Barry Manilow or some shit. Um, I don't know, dude. I'm not trying to make you feel guilty. I would just try to get out of that fucking job. But, dude, if you can't get out of that job, I mean, what are you, you going to do? It all depends on what you're doing, dude. If you're, if you're, if you're stealing from old ladies and taking their, their life savings and, uh, you know, I had a buddy of mine who was doing something like that, and he ended up in jail, so you better watch out, whatever you're doing. Um, you know what? I'm really feeling like I'm fucking getting preachy and righteous here. Um, you know what? I don't, I, I, I don't know shit. Just know that. I don't read, you know. Even all that shit I just said about Led Zeppelin. Actually, you know what? That wasn't just YouTube shit. I watched on YouTube, and this kid had the music to back it up. So, But anything else is uh, that comes out of my mouth mostly is bullshit. All right, question number two. Uh, Bill, is there any way to get links to the individual podcasts? I tried to subscribe, but I don't think it worked. I'm not really as retarded as the computer makes me look. I could not identify with you more. That's exactly what happens to me every time I try to watch or listen to anything on the on the computer, and I have no idea. I don't know how to help you. I really don't. Um, I'm like, I don't, I don't know. I'm like, that. what the fuck is that, that, that Holiday Inn commercial? You know, no, I don't know. I don't know computers, but I stayed at a Holiday Inn last night, Holiday Inn Express or whatever the fuck it is. That's how I am. You know, I'm on the computer. I know how to put up a podcast, but I don't know how to do any of that other stuff. So if anybody's listening, has this information and wants to email it to to me, I'll read it next week and I'll pass it off as my own, just like Jimmy Page, squinty eyed cunt. All right. Question number three. Bill, you must get a ton of podcast questions and overrated, underrated stuff how do you decide which ones to use in your podcast um i basically any anytime somebody if it's a repeat question um like i i I try to ignore those but once every six months i will answer the question how did you get involved in stand-up but um 
and then just yeah, if they're good questions, I feel like I can go off on them and they're funny. Then that's that's basically how I do it. But if it's a slow week, I'll read every goddamn one of them because I don't get a ton of them. I get like a dozen or so. So uh, so if you have a question, you're thinking like, oh man, he's not even going to read it, man. Chances are I will read it. You got an eighty percent chance. How about that? Eighty percent chance, and that's based on not even mathematically studying it on any level. All right, question number four. Bill, have you ever seen two guys start comparing scars? Are these two guys just a bunch of tools or what? Usually by the end, one or the other has pulled up his shirt or pulled down his pants. What a bunch of fags. i got to admit, I've never seen that. Uh, Do you hang out in a pirate bar? I have no idea. That would be weird. I, yeah, that's kind of awkward. Uh, reminds me of uh, that 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 scene in Jaws where they just sit around. Uh, yeah, this right here, uh, fucking electric eel zapped me. Oh yeah, this uh, stingray stuck me in the nuts or whatever. No, I've never seen that. But um, I, the way the picture you painted, I'd have to agree with your assessment. You, you got to say something like, "Why don't you two fucking hacked up pussies pull up your pants, please?" For the love of God. Ugh. Anyways. You know what I resent seeing? I resent seeing a middle-aged man who has a smooth chest. And not because they shaved it. Just the hair never came in. And they got those fucking five daddy long legs hanging off of one nipple. And they don't work out. And it's just all just... It looks like... uh looks like a melted snowman. <laughs> Ah, that's why I don't. I'm not a. I'm not a member of the gym. All right, Bill, have you and, and Jim Norton ever compared a, appendix scars? Uh, no, no, I haven't. No, I, I, I. This is a whole new fucking world that I don't want to get in, involved in. This is some sort of. Do they have scar porn? This is really making me uncomfortable. Uh, Bill, besides your appendix scar, what is your best scar, and how did it happen? All right, I can answer this one. I have one right above my left eyebrow, that you can only see. When if I'm imitating The Rock. And how I got it was my older brother threw me off the porch head first, and I landed like a lawn dart into a flagstone. This is basically <laughs> this is basically the story. We had, uh, you know those, those, those porch swings that they have back in the day where uh, if, you, if you came, if you were courting back in the day, You'd come and they they wouldn't let you go anywhere, so you'd sit out on a, on a spring uh, on a swing. It's like basically a love seat, but it's a swing, and you sit out there and sing like "Light a Rose" or something. "Light a Rose, I'm home again, Rosie." And barbershop quartet would show up, like in the Music Man. Yeah, we had one of those. So somehow my brother pissed me off, and he was swinging like a fucking maniac on that thing. So I grabbed, I think it was a rake. I don't know what that. that it's not important what the business end of it was, because it's really, this story is about the handle of whatever I grabbed. So it's a broom, it's a rake. I don't know what the fuck it was. And as when he got up to the top, I stood underneath him like I was in 300, you know? (laughs) And I just held that stick up, and I fucking caught him right in his stomach. And I held him for probably like half a second. And then I dropped the broom handle, whatever, and I turned around and I went to run off of the porch and he had the momentum of the swing coming down so he immediately was like right behind me. Like you ever watch the Roadrunner and the Coyote when the Coyote chases the Roadrunner? The Roadrunner goes flying by him and he's at a dead stop and somehow he catches all the way up to him except for the last three feet. That's what the fuck my brother did but he had the aid of a swing. So I'm right at the top step of the porch and he just sort of pushed me in the middle of my back. A little Claude Lemieux action, right? And that's when I just went fucking airborne. And uh, I don't know if I ever told you this, guys. The size of my huge head right now, I had this head when I was... It was the same size when I was born. So I was probably 11 years old. So let's, you know... For the sake of the story, I'm fucking top-heavy, right? So I immediately <laughs> start going down like a fucking javelin. And it happened so fast, I couldn't get my hands out. Even if I could, I would have broke both my wrists trying to stop terminal velocity of my skull. And I just fucking went headfirst into this flagstone and uh, had a nice gash. Actually took out a little chunk of my skull, a little sliver of it. 
of my Frankenstein brow. And uh, I just remember getting up, and I went back up to the top of the porch, and I was leaning over the banister because I didn't want to start bleeding in the house because I knew my dad was going to freak out because he already had to stitch me up. My dad's a dentist, so uh, it's kind of cool. Anytime you got stitches, it, you, you didn't have to go to the hospital. He just fucking... It was like go, like in between periods. They just sew you up on the bench. He just fucking do it right there. And we, you know what's funny? We always ended up having to get stitches on his day off. Poor bastard used to work like three weeks in a row. He'd get one day off, and then one of us would fall out of a tree or accidentally, in air quotes, throw a fucking rocket. At, you know? I did that one. And... Uh, we always use the same excuse. I was running through the woods and I tripped. And he'd be like, oh, for Christ's sake, I don't need this shit. And then he'd fucking, yeah, he'd just lay us down on the sofa. You know, numb us up. And he'd start stitching us up. And we'd be going, ah, ah, ah. And he'd be like, come on, stop it. Stop it. That doesn't hurt that bad. And, uh, yeah. Then you'd have a fucking scar. There you go. That's my, uh, do I have any other ones? I got bit in the face by my own dog. That was a good one. We had this little West Highland Terrier, and uh, we just kept fucking with him. Um, I don't know why. I can't even remember why at this point. It was so fucking long ago. We, we basically turned him into an attack dog. We started off just roughhousing with him, and then he would bite us a little too hard, and then we moved on to a garden glove, and we started playing what we called the glove game, and we would just keep mushing him in the face, and then he figured out how to bite so then we moved on to, I think, like hockey sticks. And we, you know, wouldn't hit them really hard. We'd just sort of like, act, you know, we'd try to dig out the puck in the corner. We'd kind of do that shit. And he'd start biting at it. And I remember when he when he would bite down on it and he finally learned to start shaking it, going like, doing that shit. We thought it was the funniest shit ever. You know, and we were all like ages two to ten. You know, this is back in the day, too, when, you know, there was no Oprah Winfrey, so people didn't know that you shouldn't leave fucking five kids under the age of 10 at home with a dog and electricity, you know? And uh, so, yeah, so we just turned this dog into a fucking attack dog, and we literally taught him how to bite, and we all thought it was hilarious until he started doing it to us. And uh, so one day, my brother's sitting on the couch, and he's eating a sandwich, and my dog's sitting there, sitting up begging, you know, a little shit, little terrier. So I start crawling up next to him. Just going, hey, I'm going to get the food. I'm going to get the food. He's sitting there going, arr, arr. And he keeps looking over at me. And I just kept creeping up going, I'm going to get the food. And then he started doing like that half a fucking smile, showing me his fangs. And we're laughing, laughing. That's what we used to do, just drive him fucking the same way we do to my little brother, just piss him off. It was just fun to watch somebody lose their shit. And uh, the dog was no exception. And then I don't know what happened. I took it too far. And he just lunged over to bite me, and I was, my face was at his face, his level, and he just grabbed me on the same side, the same side when my brother threw me off the porch. He fucking sunk in just below my eye, into my cheek, and then one of his lower canines was actually inside my mouth, and he had my entire fucking left cheek, and he went, <laughs> like that. And he knew he fucked up, too. Because he's bit me on the leg and he didn't give a fuck. But when he did that one, he was like, oh, shit. That's easily a 10-minute misconduct, if not a fucking game suspension. Um, yeah, and that was, a, that, was a, that was a rough walk into the bathroom. I remember that. It's not like it hurt. It kind of felt like uh, I was just like, I, I was worried I was going to be deformed. So that was the thing. Like, I was going to look in the mirror. I was like, oh, my God, am I going to look like, a, like someone who just got bit in the face by a fucking terrier? And somehow I didn't. He kind of, they were like puncture wounds. I still see him, man. I'm looking in the mirror right now. It kind of faded away. I got the one on my upper lip. I don't fucking know. But then I had to go to my dad's office, and he was already working on other people, so he was pissed. And it was also embarrassing the next day when I went to school. You know, face was all bruised up when I had stitches. What happened to your face? I was like, ah, I got bit by a dog. Whose dog? Oh, my dog. And like, did you get rid of it? No. Why not? Because my family is fucked in the head. What do you think? You know, dogs aren't supposed to do that shit. They're supposed to, you know, chase frisbees and be skipping along with you as you walk back from catching catfish, right? They're not supposed to bite you in the fucking face. But, you know, I deserved it. 
So there you go. There's my scar stories for the week. Um, I didn't get a chance to get to underrated, overrated this week. I'll just add to them next week. We'll have a giant, we'll have a bonus section of underrated, overrated, because there were some really good ones this week. And uh, and that is it. Um, what do I got? What do I got to hype real quick? Oh, please, uh, please come see me at uh, the, the Improv in Houston, Texas. Um, go to improv the number two dot com, or you can click on the link right on my homepage. And uh, Boston, I got my big trip back to Boston, February sixth. And uh, I'm not trying to be a cheese ball here, but tickets are fucking they're selling like hotcakes. That's such a ridiculous fucking statement. They're selling like hotcakes. Really? Who came up with that? You know, you know what? I'm not even gonna, I'm not even gonna try to explore that comedically because that is just such a hacky, like wannabe Jerry Seinfeld fucking bit. You know, selling like hotcakes. What's the deal with that? Was there a period of time when everybody wanted hotcakes? Um, I like how I said I wasn't gonna do that, and then I just did it. What do you think about that? You know. So right now, you guys should just be shutting off the podcast because I've obviously established the fact that I, that I'm not a man of my word. You know, I worked with this comedian, Ryan Dalton, this weekend, and I, I was going to do something, and I really fucked it up. I was meaning to try to get some girl to show her tits at the end of the show, and we were trying to come up with a way to do it. You know, I was going to do it in a silly way, like, come on, man, the economy's bad. You know, just, just do it for America. Just make it silly. And, you know, there'd be one girl who'd be willing to do it. And then we'd try and think about, like, reverse psychology. Like, uh, ah, you know, I, you know, I, you know, keep it going for Ryan. Isn't he, a, isn't he a great comedian? I'll tell you, but he's really bashful off stage. And the other night, this girl was showing her tits, and he, he just turned all beat red. It's one of the funniest, you know, try to fucking make it look like he's not a little fucking creep. You know? You know what the reality was? Was I wanted to see some titties, and I was using him as, as an excuse. <laughs> and I kind of forgot to do that, you know? I was really upset with myself because if I if I miss a joke, I forget to do a joke. I don't give a fuck. I'll, I'll do the joke next show. But you know, when you miss out on titties, you know, that one sticks with you. All right, that's it. That's the podcast for this week. Thank you for listening. As always, uh, everybody have a great week. And uh, wow, my Christmas tree is fucking dead. This thing is fucking dead. Look how dry and brittle this thing is. Sorry, buddy. Christmas is over. All right. Everybody have a good week. Talk to you later. All right. Bye.